Hello and welcome to the Flying Reporter Pilot Briefing. This is where I bring you up to date with changes to UK aviation policy, regulation and important news. Crucially, I won't just list the changes that are taking place or parrot the news from the CAA. I'll do my best to explain what it all means for you and your flying. In today's update, changes to call signs used by police, air ambulance, coast guard and search and rescue flights. VHF low level common frequency is now permanent, but what is it? And when and where should you use it? And do you know your wake turbulence separation minima? A recent accident report from the US reminds us of the danger of wake turbulence from helicopters. The Flying Reporter Pilot Briefing is brought to you in association with Astral Aviation Consulting. Astral is currently working with the UK CAA to provide free safety resources and workshops for general aviation pilots. First up, emergency call signs. We've probably all heard police, coast guard or air ambulance flights on the radio. Emergency aircraft, especially those on active life-saving missions, are afforded a higher priority than normal flights. For example, an air ambulance flight on a life-saving mission is classed as a Category A flight and would be given priority over virtually every other aircraft, except, say, for one that is declared an emergency. The CAA has recently reviewed the call signs used by police, air ambulance and search and rescue flights in the UK and will be implementing some changes which become effective from this September. From then, police and air ambulance flights engaged in training, rather than an active emergency, will now be required to suffix their call sign with the word Zulu. It therefore clarifies that while the aircraft is one that's often used for responding to emergencies, on this occasion, since it's a training flight only, it will not be afforded priority over other traffic. So while a call sign Helimed 49 Alpha indicates that the flight is a life-saving mission and will be given highest priority in the air, Helimed 49 Zulu indicates that it's a training flight and it will have the same priority as most other aircraft. There are some changes to search and rescue flights as well. British Rescue, or the abbreviated call sign Rescue, is now to be used when safety of life, rescue or humanitarian tasks are being undertaken, whereas the call sign Coast Guard will be reserved for other tasks by search and rescue aircraft, such as training or positioning flights. The priority afforded to different categories of flight is listed in the Manual of Air Traffic Services Part 1. It shows that aircraft in an emergency, an aircraft that is declared a police emergency, or air ambulance safety of life flights are given the highest priority, Category A. Search and rescue and operational police flights come next, Category B. Royal flights or flights carrying heads of state are next in line, that's Category C. Category D is reserved for heads of government or senior government ministers. Positioning flights by air ambulances or search and rescue aircraft are in category E. And then there's the rest of us. We all fall into the normal or Zulu category at the bottom of the food chain. The changes coming into effect in September are detailed in CAP 413 Supplementary Instruction 2023-1. Next the VHF Low Level Common Frequency. In June 2021, the CAA launched the trial of a new frequency called the VHF Low Level Common Frequency on 130.490. The aim was to reduce the risk of mid-air collisions between aircraft operating below 2,000 feet. The trial began because of concerns about an increasing number of near misses between military and civilian aircraft. The idea of the frequency was to improve situational awareness for aircraft operating in the UK low flying system when they're not in receipt of an air traffic service. It's not an open chat frequency to stay in touch with your pals in the air, it is instead a frequency on which to make blind position calls only. Following this trial, the CAA recently announced that it was making the frequency permanent. But you, like me, might be wondering when and where should the frequency be used and what is the UK low flying system anyway? Well, the UK military low flying system covers the whole of the UK from the surface to 2,000 feet above ground or sea level. It's divided into low flying areas or LFAs. Most military low flying training is conducted on weekdays in daylight hours at speeds of up to 550 knots and concentrated between a height of 250 feet and 600 feet. 
The VHF low level common frequency can be used if you're flying below 2000 feet, you're not in receipt of an air traffic service and you're outside the area where frequency monitoring codes are in use. Getting an air traffic service should take priority over the use of the low level common frequency, the CAA says. But where in the country would those conditions actually be met? In most of the military low-level system, you'd probably be able to get a lower airspace radar service or even a flight information service. But there are some pockets where this might be difficult, so particularly if you're flying below 2,000 feet in areas of high terrain. Areas where the frequency is most likely to be useful include the military tactical training areas in northern and southern Scotland and mid Wales. These areas are shown on a chart in the en route section 620 in the UK AIP. You can of course expect military low flying virtually anywhere outside of regulated or controlled airspace in the UK and so if you're flying below 2000 feet, can't get a service from a LARS, an aerodrome or a flight information service officer, then of course you could monitor and make blind calls on this new low level common frequency. Finally, for today's pilot briefing, wake turbulence. I'm sure we all know what it is, but can you remember the recommended separation you should apply when operating close to other aircraft? And what about helicopter rotor downwash? A recent investigation by the NTSB into a light aircraft crash in the USA highlighted the danger of wake turbulence from helicopters. Video of the crash was captured on an airport security camera. The Cessna 120 tailwheel aircraft was making an approach to an uncontrolled airfield, Cable, in California in January 2022. His approach followed the arrival of two helicopters. The pilot reported that he planned to land long to increase his separation. However, when he was on short final, he said that he saw one of the helicopters cross the runway ahead of him. He applied full power and initiated a go around, but the aircraft entered the wake of one of the helicopters downwash and he lost control and crashed. The pilot suffered minor injuries. The incident resulted in the FAA and AASA to remind pilots of the dangers of wake turbulence from slow moving or hovering aircraft. So what can we all do to avoid incidents like this? Wake turbulence guidance states that aircraft should avoid entering an area comprising three times the rotor diameter of helicopters that are hovering or hover taxiing because of the powerful downwash from their rotor blades. In en route flights, a minimum of five nautical mile separation should be applied between a light aircraft and a heavy or medium sized aircraft crossing the same level or less than 1000 feet below. On final approach, there should be four mile separation between a small and light aircraft, between five and six miles between a medium and light aircraft, and seven miles between a heavy and light aircraft. For departures from the same position on the runway, you should allow two minutes if taking off in a light aircraft behind a small or medium or heavy aircraft, and three minutes behind a super heavy aircraft. In my experience, air traffic controllers will often caution pilots about weight turbulence, will sometimes state the recommended minima, but knowing these distances and times that you need to apply, I think is certainly useful, especially if you regularly operate from uncontrolled airfields with a mix of traffic. CAA Safety Sense Leaflet 15C Wake Vortex or the Manual of Air Traffic Services Part 1 has more information. Well that concludes this edition of the Flying Reporter Pilot Briefing. If you found the information useful then please subscribe to my channel so as not to miss the next in the series. And do please share the video with your pilot friends and social networks. I'm sure your friends and your pilot buddies will appreciate it. The Pilot Briefing is brought to you in association with Astral Aviation Consulting. Check out their website now for links to pilot safety resources, videos and workshops. Thank you for watching. Fly safely my friends.